Um, cool. So uh, my name's Adam Ullman. I'm the director of API and front end engineering at Talkbox. I basically I run the JavaScript team at Talkbox. Um, you can reach me at a Ullman on Twitter. That's also my um, username on uh, on GitHub. If you want to have a look at what I'm working on there. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk today about going beyond Skype. So when, whenever I tell people that I work at a video chat company, they say to me, oh, like Skype. Um, and yes, like Skype, but it's potentially so much more than Skype. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, so as kind of an overview, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is OpenTalk. Um, then I'm going to do a live coding session. I'm going to try to anyway. Um, wish me luck on that. Um, I don't have the fancy drag and drop thing that Patrick had. I'm going to try and actually write it. Old school. Um, and then I'm going to talk a bit about, um, so the live coding exercise, I'm going to try and build Skype with OpenTalk to show that you, yes, it is, it is actually possible to build Skype. Um, but also then go beyond Skype and kind of the cool uses of WebRTC that we see at TalkBox. Um, so what is OpenTalk? So OpenTalk is a platform for real-time communication. What does that mean? It's um, basically makes, so it's built on top of WebRTC. Originally, we've been around for a while, actually. It's been around for a few years. So originally, it was built on top of Flash um, using RTMP and um, Flash Media Server and stuff like that. But now, since the advent of WebRTC, we've thrown all that hideous code away. Um, and we're using all JavaScript now. There's not a trace of Flash in our, in our stack, fortunately. Um, and it's uh, built on top of WebRTC. And what we do is basically we make WebRTC a lot easier, um, more reliable, and more powerful. So we try to add new features to WebRTC um, and uh, yeah, basically make it do awesome stuff. Um, so what does OpenTalk give you? So Patrick talked a little bit about what do you get with just vanilla WebRTC um, and kind of walked through how you do it. And he talked a little bit about the tricky parts. Um, and we try to make that take those parts away from you. So we'll, we handle all the signaling for you. We handle the WebSocket servers. Um, we handle firewall traversing with stun and turn. We host the, the stun and turn servers for you, so you don't need to worry about that stuff. Um, and we give you some simple APIs um, that are kind of an abstraction layer on top of WebRTC. So that way, as the as the standards change as they do and as they're going to with ORTC coming out soon. Um, all that stuff that Patrick just told you in three years won't work anymore. Oh, and it should be backwards compatible. But uh, yeah, the reality is, as we've been there from the beginning, things change under the covers and we just make it keep working so that you just have to write your code once and it'll just keep working and we'll do the getting it to work in other, in other um, with the newer specs as they come out. Um, so we have cross-browser support as well. So we, we, you know, obviously Chrome, Firefox, and Opera, um, and Chrome on Android, and everything all work as usual with vanilla WebRTC, and we don't use any plugins there. But for Internet Explorer, we have a plugin to make that work, um, and we're working on a Safari plugin as well um, to make that happen. And we actually, yeah, did, worked on that here in Sydney. Um, we also add, so as far as new features on top of WebRTC, archiving is a big one we offer. So if you want to record your conversation, um, that doesn't really work. And uh, with vanilla WebRTC, but we, basically, we make that happen for you. Um, and multi-party, so Patrick talked a bit about how multi-party is tricky. Um, and we kind of have a server, like an MCU in the middle that you can use to, to broadcast to lots of people and things like that that you can't do with just regular WebRTC. Um, so yeah, as Jackie mentioned, we have you know offices here in, in Sydney as well. So there are four of us here right now in Sydney working on, on JavaScript. Um, most of the JavaScript development happens here in Sydney, actually. Um, and then we've got a team of about 20 or so engineers in San Francisco, um, maybe more. I think there's about 60 people altogether at the company. Most of them are engineers. So it's got to be more than 20, yeah. <laughs> um, OK, cool. So live coding time, wish me luck. I'm going to try and actually, so this is where you get to judge me on my editor. I'm still using TextMate. Um, cool, let's make it big. And feel free to shout out if you see me making silly mistakes, as I probably will. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so let's put my doc type tag in there. Let's be good. Um, so what I'm going to do is just create a basic um, HTML page. Let's call it. Um, Let's call it the Skype killer. Um, and I'm, well, actually, the first thing, well, yeah, let's put my body tag in there as well. The first thing I need to do, though, is sign up for an account on Talkbox. 
So basically you can do that by just clicking on the sign up, go to talkbox.com, click sign up, you'll get an email. I won't walk you through all that. Um, and then you basically want to log into your dashboard eventually. So let me make this bigger so you can see it. There we go. Um, so in your dashboard, what you get when you sign up for Talkbox is you get like you do with most of these API services. You get an API key and you get a secret that you want to keep secret. Um, it's actually on this page if I scroll up, so I better not scroll up. Um, it's, uh, and what you do with that is you basically use that to generate what we call a session ID. And so a session in OpenTalk is, think of it like a, like a chat room. And basically, you want to get people into that chat room. And if they're in the chat room, they'll see each other. Um, so, you, so you generate a session ID, which is like this chat room ID, which I'll grab here. Um, what you would really do, instead of using the dashboard to do this, you'd use a server-side SDK and generate it in your server. And we've got SDKs for Node and Python and PHP and everything. Um, but for the purposes of this example, I'm just going to hard code it in here. Um, so let's put script tag in here. Let's say my session ID, put that in there. Um, and let's grab a token. So a token is like a, an access token um, that allows you to connect. So you basically want to generate a new token for every person, and you can set an expire time and set different permissions and things like that for it. Um, so let's grab my token. Um, then what else we got? An API key we need as well. Uh-oh. Don't look at my secret. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Um, I'll have to disable this account as soon as no. Um, <laughs> um, so we've got our session ID token and API key. That's basically all we need. And you, as I said, you'd basically pull this from the server side. So you'd have a server side SDK that will generate these things for you. Um, and then what we can do is start doing our client side stuff. So let's create a session. So a session is like a, a chat room. And I'm going to pass in my API key and my session ID. Um, then I am going to connect to that session uh, with a token. And then we've got a, a callback function here that, that is kind of like a node style callback, um, returns an error if there's an error. So I'm going to say if there's not an error when I connect, um, then I'm going to alert, yay, let's go. Kill Skype. I missed the apostrophe. There we go. Um, OK, let's see if that works. So I'm just going to run. Good point. What is an OT? So an OT <laughs> comes from this guy. <laughs> so you need to include our JavaScript library. Otherwise, nothing's going to work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're working on that, yeah. Um, OK, and let me save this. Now, where did I put it? CJS demo. I'm just going to run a little server here. Now, hopefully, when I go to localhost 8080, if all goes to plan, my Skype killer is loading. And yay, let's go kill Skype. OK, that's working. So I'm connected. What's next? I want to get, um, let's get some video happening. So I'm going to, well, first, let's put somewhere in the body where I want my publisher to go. So a publisher is well, what we call a publisher. is basically like a get user media thing that you saw before. It's, it's, your, um, it's your local video that you're going to publish into a session. Um, so I'm going to do a uh, publisher equals ot.init publisher. Um, and I'm going to tell it to go into that publisher div. So you can pass in a div ID here or, or the actual element. Um, and then what else am I going to do? I mean, you can pass a few options in here. Uh, so I can say, let's make it 100 pixels by 100 pixels, something like that. So let's see what happens. Now when I load this page, I should get asked to allow my camera. And I should see myself, yay, let's go kill Skype. OK. And that's me in the corner, really tiny, but let's make it bigger. There we go. Um, Cool. So that's my publisher, but it's not doing anything yet. That's just me seeing myself. Um, so instead of saying we're going to kill Skype, let's actually use the publisher and publish it on a session. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, without doing this, I basically just got to 
my, my own video sitting there and I'm just looking at myself. So what I'm doing here is saying, let's, let's publish this publisher on the session so that other people can see me. Um, and then on top of that, I need to do something to actually show it. So we basically give you, you can, in this application, I'm basically going to say everybody's going to see everybody. Um, but there's lots of different use cases you might have, like you might have one person publishing and everybody else watching, or um, only a few people publishing. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to say let's let everybody, let's let everybody see everybody. Um, so in my stream created event, so stream created is basically fires when I do a publish, but it doesn't just, it doesn't fire for me. It fires for if anybody else creates a stream on the session. So I'm listening for that stream created event to happen. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want to subscribe to that stream. So this is just going to subscribe to everybody that's in that um, session, that everybody that publishes in that session. Um, and then I, what I probably want to do is do a similar thing to what I did up here. Well, actually, let's, let's just see what that does first. So what that's going to do, if all goes to plan, is I'll see myself. And then if I open a new tab, I'll see myself and the other guy. So I get to see more of me. Isn't that, yay, it's working. OK, so that looks OK, but I want to place it a bit better because it's not in a good spot right there. So let's, that basically what that does by default is just appends it to the body. Um, so what I'm going to do now is tell it to put it inside this subscribers div. Um, so similar to what I did before, I'll say, put it in subscribers, and I'm going to say that I want to append it to the subscribers. Um, and then let's steal some CSS from another, from this. Here's something I prepared earlier. Um, let's steal the CSS, because this is SidJS after all, not Sid CSS, and my CSS is horrible. So <laughs> um, yeah. Here's some, like you wouldn't do this in a real application. I'm just trying to you know, put everything in one page for, for sake of example. Um, but what I'm doing here is I'm going to say, let's put, um, let's put the uh, publisher, make it 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Let's position it absolutely in the top right hand corner and bump up the Z index so it sits on the top. Um, and then let's take these subscribers um, container and put it in the you know, fill it up and leave some space at the bottom, 200 pixels, because I'm going to put a text chat thing in there later. Um, so for here, I'm going to say append, and I'm going to make, so you can subscribe to a whole bunch of people, but I'm just going to assume that this is just a one-to-one -one application, just, just for simplicity. Um, and I'm going to say that I want the width of this guy to be 100% of its parent and the height of it to be 100% of its parent. And then if it all goes to plan, I should have something that looks, oh, let's reload it, because that doesn't look right yet. There we go. There we go, that looks a bit better. Yeah. So I've got a little bit of space at the bottom for text chat, and I've got me big in the middle um, on both of them. OK. So that's video chat. There we go. I've got video chat working, and you know it's picture in picture. That was pretty easy, just using CSS to lay it out. Um, so now let's add some text chat. So we, as I said before, we kind of provide um, signaling for you, um, so that you don't have to worry about having a WebSocket server, and then we kind of expose that and let you send arbitrary strings around the place, um, and so that you can you know use it. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is create a text chat thing that's going to sit at the bottom. Um, inside it, I'm going to put a form. And actually, I'm going to put something that I'm going to call history. I have to be careful about the naming, because I'm going to copy and paste the CSS. I think that's what I called it. Um, and then I'm going to put an input in here. Say it's a text input. I'm going to say placeholder of. Um, message or something like that. Um, and that's going to be my that's going to be my form for sending text. And uh, let me let me grab that CSS that I had earlier. Yeah, I got all the names right. Um, so what this CSS is going to do is just basically um, position that 
text chat down at the bottom, make it 200 pixels high, um, and then leave 20 pixels at the bottom to put the, the message text in there. So I'm kind of wishing I had jQuery now, but I'm going to go ahead without it and say, let's get the form element. Select uh, form, grab the form. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> form to add event listener submit, right? And I'm going to get an event, and I'm going to prevent default on that, otherwise my page will refresh when I submit it. OK, and now I've got alert, send message. Let's just make sure this works. Don't want to get ahead of myself. So now, here we go. I've got this little text message. Why is it so small? Oh, well. Um, ah, thank you. Well spotted. Um, t yeah, t-shirt later for you. We do have t-shirts and stuff. <laughs> uh, great. So there we go. Then it's bigger. Now if I say hello, I should get a little send message. Yay, it's working. OK, so let's make it actually send the message. Um, kill that. So we've got on this session again, this same session, we've got a method called signal. And what signal does is let you signal people. No, it lets you um, send arbitrary strings to everybody else that's in, the, um, that's in the session. So you can either address it to a particular person by providing their um, ID in here. Or what I want to do in this case is just broadcast it to everybody that's in the session. So I'm just going to omit that field and just say that I'm going to give it a type. So a type is basically any string you want to call it. It helps you kind of filter if you're sending you know, messages for different things. So I'm just going to call this thing message. Um, and I'm going to say that the data is going to be what was in that message text. So message text. Uh, I call it message text. I think. Um, and the data is going to be message text.value. And that's going to send that. So that's sending the message. Um, and actually, I've got a completion handler here, too. I'm going to say, if there isn't an error, let's clear out the message text value so I don't have to delete it manually. Um, so that's sending a message. Now to receive a message, I can say session.on. I'm listening for another event like I did up here for string created. But this time, I'm listening for uh, signal. And you can listen for all signals like that, or you can listen for specific types. This is where the type comes in handy. So I just want to know about message signals. Um, when that happens, I'm going to get an event. And that event is going to have some data on it, which is this data that I specified here. Um, so I want to put that into the history. So I had that history thing before. Um, let's call it message history. Um, get that history element. And I'm going to say um, create an element. Let's say message equals. Let's create a div. Make it inner HTML the that event data that I put here. And then let's say that I want to append that to the message history. So that should chuck it in there, I think. Um, yeah, that should do it. Let's give that a go. So I've got this guy. Let's get this guy in here. They see each other, and if I say hello, this guy sees hello as well. It's, it's more, it's more um, impressive if you can see them side by side. Let's see that in instant replay. Hello, yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks. So I'm going to let's. I'm just going to grab a little bit more um, CSS. So let's say I want to. Those messages were kind of stacked on top of each other. I couldn't tell who said what. So let's um, let's put some new. Uh, let's kind of put some classes on those history elements. So let's call them mine and theirs, and basically just put mine on the right and theirs on the left. Um, so what I can do down here is I can say the message dot class name is equal to, and I can check if it's from me. Um, if it's if the connection ID is equal to my sessions connection ID, 
then it's from me. So if that's the case, I'm going to call it mine. Otherwise, I'm going to call it theirs. And that should, that should do it. And then I can also potentially um, use this scroll into view, I think it was called. Did I, I have that over here somewhere. Yeah, scroll into view. I discovered that today. It's handy. So that if I'm going off the end, it'll keep pushing it down to the bottom so I can see the latest message. So let's, um, let's try that again. Refresh these two guys, and I should see hello on the right, and this guy sees it on the left. Yeah, there we go. So you might be thinking, but Skype isn't a web application. And you'd be right. It's not a web application. So I had to play around today with, um, with Node WebKit, which was a lot of fun. Um, and basically, I don't know if you've had to play with it, but basically, I took that exact same code. Um, you'll have to trust me on that. It's, I did it from memory, so it won't be exactly the same, but same idea. Um, and added a package JSON file. and compiled it into this, or zipped it together to this NW thing, and then I can run it. And as easy as that, I've got the same app, but now it's a desktop application. So there you go. There's, did I accidentally quit Chrome? I did. Oh, well. Um, and I'm pretty sure I used the same session ID for that, that one that I prepared earlier. So it should, yep. So now I see myself in Node WebKit. And on the, so now this, that's desktop and web interoperating with each other. So the great thing about Node WebKit is they've used a really recent version of, um, of WebKit, which has all of this WebRTC stuff bundled into it. So we didn't have to do anything special. Just It just works. Um, the other thing Skype have, though, is they have mobile application. Um, so we can do that in JavaScript, too. So you can all, we have a, um, we have a video chat, I'm sorry, we have an iOS and Android native SDKs. Um, also, you know, it works in Android on Chrome. Um, but we have also have this open source Cordova plugin for OpenTalk. That means that we can use Cordova. And I've got the code in here. And it's basically the same code. Um, there's a little bit of extra work you have to do um, to wait for uh, device ready at the top here. Um, and that's, uh, and you include a different OpenTalk JS. You include the, uh, the one from the plugin that does some, some magic that you don't need to worry about. <laughs> but if you're interested, you can ask me about it later. Um, and then if I run the application on here, here's again one I prepared earlier. Hopefully, this is going to work. I'm going to try and airplay to the screen so you can all see. Yeah, there we go. Let's get all the ridiculous apps out of the way. OK, and I'm going to open up the same app. Oh, yep, yeah, there it is in Cordova. And fingers crossed, I should see myself on here as well, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Every, I'm, I'm, yeah, I look at myself every day. That's my job, yeah. So yeah, and there we go. That's, that's working with the, with the iPad. So there you go, Skype. It was that easy. I just did it in, what, 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So that's that went actually surprisingly well. Thanks for thanks for the help, guys. Um, <laughs> so that's that's Skype, and um, you know Skype is you know been around for a long time. It's pretty boring, um, and there's you know we've all seen we've all seen Skype before. So I thought it'd be a good example to show that we can build that. But we also see you know as we're a platform for video chat, our customers are all different people building cool. Um, video chat use cases. So we get to see all these things kind of firsthand. So I thought I'd walk you guys through some of those. Um, so this one is one that actually I really like. Um, I, have, I have small kids, and they have grandparents that live abroad. And so they can use this application to read stories with them. So the grandparents can kind of flick through the pages, and they're using the, um, the uh, that same signaling API we use to kind of synchronize and tell you to go to the next page. Um, and you know they can you can still be able to have that experience of reading a reading a, a book to your grandchild or to your you know if I'm overseas I can do it with my kids as well um, yeah so that's that's kind of a cool use case this is another one called SUP which I think was probably inspired by Yo um, which you may have heard of um, but the idea with this application is that it 
you, you say sup to someone <laughs> by sending them a sup. And uh, they, if they accept, you get to see their camera and they can kind of show you what they see and you can kind of like say that you like it or swipe left and right to tell them to, to look somewhere else. Um, so that's an interesting use case, something that I thought was quite unique. Um, you may have heard of this Amazon Mayday button. So we, we don't power that at ourselves. They, I think it is built on WebRTC though. Um, but basically with the Kindle Fire, you can get customer support. So the idea is you know, if you're having issues, you can jump into a support chat with somebody, you'll be able to see their face and they can see your screen and they can draw on there. So in this example, I think they're saying something like, you know, how do I, where's the music button? And they're saying it's right there in front of you. Um, <laughs> 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 um, Fountain is another one, so it's a similar idea, except rather than supporting somebody on a mobile application and you know pointing them out where they need to click, it's um, it's showing it, this Fountain is kind of for anything. So if I wanted to, in this case, my tomatoes are dying and I need help from a gardener to tell me why they're dying, I could show them the show them the tomatoes. Um, another another use case is they have are things like interior designers. If you want to get you know advice on what color you should paint a wall or something like that, you can kind of show them and that you know or or if you you know fancy yourself a handyman and want some help installing something, you can get some professional advice. Is the idea? Um, so that's kind of a cool use case as well. Similar idea. Um, Be my eyes is one that that um, is quite. Um, makes it, made me feel a bit good about what we were doing at work. Um, the idea here is that it's a um, volunteer organization where people can volunteer to help blind people. So blind people, um, you know, in this example, this blind person wants to be able to read the label on something and they can get into the app. Um, volunteers will be notified that somebody wants to be able to see something and they can jump in to help out and, and help them read what's on the label. So that's kind of a cool use case for it as well. Um, here's another one which is, which is interesting. This is a, a school in, uh, an English language school in Brazil, um, basically decided that they could pair up English language learners in Brazil, so young people in Brazil that are trying to learn English, with people in retirement communities in the US who just want to talk to anybody, what? please. <laughs> 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 um, and kind of <laughs> pair them together. So that, that's another great use of, of uh, WebRTC. Um, and then we get into the robots, which is, which is my favorite. I tell my kids, actually, that like, when they ask me what I do, I say, I write software that runs on robots. <laughs> um, uh, so one of them is this, is this toy called the Romo, which is um, basically you stick an iPhone into it, and it has these little kind of tractor wheels, and you can drive it around. Um, and you can see what it sees through the camera in the front of the iPhone. Um, and uh, yeah, you can control it through that signaling, same signaling API we were talking about before. Um, and the idea, it also has some cool apps where it can do things like recognize your face and follow you around the room and things like that. It's quite, it's quite a cool, cool toy. Um, and then there's the double. So it's a very similar idea, except it's much bigger and it's with an iPad and it's meant not for kids. This one's meant for adults to play with. Um, so the idea with the double is that we've got one in our office in San Francisco, um, although I don't think it's plugged in and charged, but I can log into it and I can drive it around and harass people even though I'm not there. Um, and you can see, yeah, you can go and bang into them. Um, and you can see, they can see you obviously, and you can see through the camera in the front and drive it around. So what I'm hoping that we can be able to do, although I don't know whether it's gonna work, is Double Robotics let you do a test drive on their website. Um, I was playing around with it earlier though and it wasn't, oh no, it has this disconnected button. Let's see if it, if it can work. I might be able to connect to it but not drive it. So the idea is this is what they see. Um, and I see this is in some office in Sunnyvale, California. And can I drive it? No. I can't I drive it. Motivational poster. Yeah, they do. Oh, it is plugged in. I can see it's plugged in. So there's there's this thing to be able to look down. Um, but for some reason, will it let me drive? No, it won't let me drive. I think it needs to be charged up. But I recommend go to go to um, doublerobotics.com and click on test drive, and you can drive it around and bump into things. It's good fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, let's close that one up. Where was I? Cool. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's all I had to talk about a bit. So hopefully I've shown you that you can build Skype in just a few lines with, with OpenTalk, um, but there's a lot more cool stuff that you can do. And um, yeah, thanks. Thank you, Adam. <laughs>